more songs that we're gonna play. But I brought these up. Oh yes. Um, okay, I was gonna do something else. Oh, oh no, please. I was gonna say that um, we we talked to them earlier, but wanted to just say thank you to Ted on guitar and keyboard. So we give it up. Year with us? Sorry, sometimes my list comes out of nowhere. Anyways, um, this is your sixth year with us, right? <laughs> Do you like us more or less than you did six years ago? You like us way more. But you didn't think we were bitches when you first started working for us. Now you know that it's like a full spectrum. <laughs> you thought we were very talented and you thought we were angelic, but now you know that we're also bitches. In the nicest way. What I mean is fierce. Like, like Beyonce. If you, if, you want, if you want to know, I thought that you were really sweet when we first started working with you. Um, you had like, you had like white stretched out jeans and you had like kind of puffy hair and you wore these cute glasses like you were Harry Potter. And, <laughs> and now it's like we can't keep you away from the scotch and the hookers, it's weird. <laughs> Just kidding, okay. That's good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Johnny Andrews. Johnny! Johnny! Johnny's been with us almost as long as Ted, even though it, it feels, yeah, it's five years, even though it felt like Ted was with us for like a century before Johnny came along. Um, we really have Ted to thank for Johnny. Um, he's Ted's illegitimate child from his second wife, and uh, his ex-wife was like, oh yeah, you are taking Johnny on the road, you son of a bitch. Is this getting too dark? I don't know, I just get weird. I just, I just, I just, I just have fun with you. No, I'm just joking. Johnny is um, our age as well, and he's a really wonderful drummer. Actually, if I, maybe this is too much information for the audience, but Johnny, um, I mean, Johnny's in his 30s. I mean, he is a, you're basically like a James Bond in our band. Like, you really, you've entered, is he six months older? You've, yeah. <laughs> Johnny, what is it like to be 30? Tegan and I are going to be there very soon. How do you feel about it? Your back is starting to hurt. <laughs> That's it? That's as bad as it gets? It doesn't do you have gray hair? Do you feel like a spry chicken? Is that what I was saying around these parts? <laughs> I'm really making it awkward. You're great, Johnny. You look good tonight. Look handsome. Last, last person on stage. He's grown a beard um, in the last couple of days. I'm not sure if that means that we've aged him and he wants to show it externally through hair growth. But, um, or maybe it's because I look like Justin Bieber and we've been playing in front of a completely boring audience. And he wants to make sure that they know he's not a lesbian. Anyways, everyone on the basement are Sean Hubers. Um, we only have two songs left. Uh, this tremendous evening is actually coming to an end, by the um, For some of you, not for everyone. I'm going to call one last number. It might be two, depending on how good the question is. Uh, and then we're gonna wrap this up. So number 19. Is that bad? You right there? Hello. There's the microphone. Follow Chris. Oh, Chris Hibbins. Let's give him a round. Yeah, Chris Hibbins has done a great job. Chris has been with the organization for a long time and uh, he takes care of all of our special needs. Alright, can you say your name? Hi there, I'm Sarah. Hi Sarah. And, Hi, beautiful uh, girlfriend. And my question is, uh, which is your favorite tattoo and what does it mean? Oh, I was going to laugh. I thought you were going to ask us our favorite song and I was like, you people stop asking us what our freaking favorite song is. <laughs> favorite tattoo. Um, you know, I mean, my mother and my father bought me my first tattoo, which surprises a lot of parents <laughs> when they meet us and they're like, wee. But, um, and I started small, and then I, I got two small tattoos, and I waited seven years. And then I can't stop now, it's like an addiction. But my favorite tattoo is probably this tree on my arm, and uh, it's the one generally people respond most positively to. Unlike this tree on this arm, and usually people are like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a tree, and they're like, I like the green one on this arm. <laughs> and uh, 
I always get tattoos at the end of things, to kind of celebrate the end of things. And when my grandma passed away, she didn't want to be buried, she wanted to be cremated, and we didn't know what to do with it. So we like took her to the river and we all took a handful of her and it was weird because then everyone wiped their hand off and we're all like, oh, that was all for all of us. <laughs> Which is totally my family to do something highly inappropriate like that. And, um, and then we went, we had to be buried a tree for her in the park and we just buried the tree. <laughs> we buried the tree underground. So we not go. Um, we killed the tree. Anyways, I got the tree. This is not what my grandma's tree looks like, but um, I can't see it, it's underground. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I don't have any tattoos there, Mom. I can see tattoos on the right. right. I just somebody drew those <laughs> Okay. Thanks for your question. We'll do one more. Uh, 37. If you're here, we'll do you. I mean, we won't do you. <laughs> Oh, you're over there. Okay, come on over and, and speak into the microphone. Very exciting. Hello. What is your name? My name's Susan. Hi, Susan. Good, thank you. Um, I was just wondering how you guys stay grounded after becoming so popular and making boundaries. With you people? <laughs> <laughs> or with each other? <laughs> I, get, I get what you're asking. You know, I think I'll pass the message to Sarah. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> okay, she's ready to answer. <laughs> no, I mean I think that's a really interesting question. And as I get older and I sit next to more adults on airplanes, I have to answer that question a lot. <laughs> you know that sounds weird. I just when people are strangers and they're adults, they always ask that question. That's a very common question for us on airplanes. That's all I mean. And um, they'll be like, "How do you stay so grounded? How come you're not on PCP?" And you know whatever. And so. <laughs> to be crazy and the thing the truth is I, I think it's two things um, uh, sort of crushing self-esteem issues that um, that make you like I was saying earlier like you not crushing self-esteem that's I'm being dramatic oh my god I think <laughs> when you feel sort of when you feel sort of crap about yourself and then you go out into the world and you're making music and you're and, and you're you're sort of getting like um, popular or people are telling you oh you know that they like you or whatever it sort of balances out you know it's just sort of you know you don't get a big ego about about it you just sort of feel like oh I'm glad people value what I do but it's like I don't feel um, like I'm not gonna get off the stage tonight and like like light light a garbage can on fire and like dance around wild with like a wave off or anything it actually sounds pretty fun it doesn't really it sort of feels like very balanced, like this feels very good. I feel like we give a lot and then people give, give a lot back and then it just sort of balances you out, you know, like there's no arrogance in that. And, uh, and, then, and then the second part, of, second part of it is that I think being in a band with someone who's like my family member and like our mom being so involved in our lives and like, you know, we're so close with all the people that we travel with, like Chris Hibbins was saying earlier, he's been working with us for like eight years. And I think there are certain people in our world that if we turned into gigantic assholes, they would just say like, hey, you're, you're a giant asshole, and that would probably really bug us. And I think, um, so we try to stay really grounded. And that's the way you connect, I think, to people. Like, um, I've always been very uncomfortable with the division between um, people. Like, when people really spaz out with us or whatever, I, it makes me want to spaz out. Like, I want to mimic them or something. So, um, like, I want to be the same as them. So it's like, I think that we've, we've managed to sort of stay grounded by just being on the same level with everybody all the time. We are going to play two more songs, but I know, I know not all of you probably are on Twitter, so you maybe didn't know, or, or I didn't. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> I know that everybody got the message that this was an evening with Tegan and Sarah, and that there was going to be so much talking and interaction, and you guys have been fantastic, so and it really does mean a lot to us, so thank you so much for being so special and different and, and to be able to have the ability to do shows like tonight is an absolute privilege and it's only because we have such an amazing audience that we're able to pull shit like this and uh, a patient, patient audience too and we appreciate that so much so we're going to play two more songs and then we're done and we just 
hope all of you um, continue to be the people that you are because you've all just been so great and I'm sure you're probably just all amazing people. So thanks so much from us to you. Enjoy the last time.